John Hartley here for Tuts Plus, and in this lesson for a Beginner's Guide to Web Accessibility, we'll take a quick look at some assistive technologies. Assistive technologies are used by many and range from screen magnifiers that simply enlarge a specific area on a screen, all the way to screen readers that read everything that your mouse hovers over. First, we'll look at screen magnifiers. Extensions like Chrome Viz, Zoom, or Zoom Page, or even the default Zoom of the browser are good examples, and software like Magic from Freedom Scientific for Windows, and the default magnifier on OS X, or the Supernova Reader Magnifier all help enlarge the screen so that someone with a vision disability can more easily see your web page. Another piece of screen magnification is the potential to increase the cursor size. This helps clarify where the mouse cursor is at all times. In this way, user is essentially able to use your site the same way as those without vision impairment. Screen readers are much more powerful. A screen reader can read an entire web page, tell a user what type of element they're encountering, and even convert the text on the screen to braille. If on Windows, users have the option to use software like MVDA for free or pay for software like JAWS or Orca. On OS X, there is a free screen reader called VoiceOver that comes standard on all Macs. Other screen readers include Chromevox and FireEyes. In general, all screen readers will list out headers, read alt tags for images, list links on a page, use access keys, read out tables in the column content format. They will obey display none and visibility hidden by not reading those, but they won't pay attention to the CSS layout order. It will go primarily by the order of the markup. Screen readers will read text that's been indented off the screen. In chapter two, we'll take a look at NVDA and voiceover. Then in chapter three, we'll learn a little more about visually hidden text that is not on the screen, but a screen reader can actually read to help with the content of your page. We've taken a look at users to keep in mind when planning for your site to be accessible and the tools that they'll use. You've also learned what it means to make your website compliant and how the WCAG helps you do that. In the next chapter, we'll take a look at some of the tools you can use to start testing your site manually to achieve the highest level of accessibility.